Koshi's Business Builders is proudly brought to you by our partners Dell, PayPal and KPMG, who are helping small businesses grow. Coming up on Koshi's Business Builders, we help a local charity promote a worthy cause through technology. The Aussie businesses banding together to rebuild our local manufacturing industry and learn how to get the most out of Google's digital tools. Hello and welcome to Koshi's Business Builders. Have you been sitting on a great business idea but don't know where to start? Well, you are in the right place. Tune in today as we share insider tips on how to create a winning business, plus a big dose of inspiration from the small business owners who are leading the way. Well, having just wrapped up that inspiring Olympic and Paralympic period, and with the warm months approaching, our minds are shifting towards getting back outdoors and maintaining our well-being through exercise, especially with many of us living through lockdowns across the country. One organisation, We Ride Australia, based in Victoria, is a not-for-profit that advocates for the wide-reaching benefits of bike riding, not just for our physical and mental health, but also for the reduced impact cycling has on the environment. We spoke with We Ride Executive Officer Peter Burke to get a better understanding of how they engage with the community to get their message out. I'm Peter Burke. I'm the Executive Officer of We Ride Australia, which is a, a national independent voice for cycling. It's a, a charity that's focused on achieving policies and investment that allow more people to ride a bike. It's about getting more bums on bikes. The uh, organisation has been operating for about 20 years, three years as an independent charity. I've enjoyed bike riding for a long time and the opportunity to bring together my sports background as well as my government background enabled me to join the organisation. We work on all levels of riding, whether they be transport, someone just popping down to the shops, people riding for sport, for leisure, for enjoyment, as well as working with the health and the environment sectors as well. One of the biggest challenges for the organisation has always been communicating and engaging with our key stakeholders. During COVID, this has actually become more of a challenge because we haven't been able to get out and tell our story to the same degree. The future of We Ride is very similar to the future of bike riding. It will grow as more people understand the benefits. We Ride will be able to demonstrate and communicate and deliver on more people riding bikes, more bums on bikes. I'm joined now by Joe Burst and Dell Technologies Ambassador, who's here to dig a little deeper to get an understanding of the issues that Peter and We Ride Australia face in delivering their message. Joe? Thanks, David. And hi, Peter. It's a wonderful cause that you and your team are advocating for. And I can only imagine it has some of its own unique challenges. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, for us, with staff working across different states, communicating internally, making sure everyone has the most current information is extremely important. And then when we head out to meetings or run events with stakeholders, whether that's in Parliament House in Canberra or any of the other uh, Parliament Houses across the country, or we're at bike events talking to individual riders and bike brands, having capacity to have the right information and present it in the right way is very critical for the organisation. It's really interesting how Technology plays such an important role in your organisation. Can you share a little bit about that with us? Technology is critical. Uh, and that's whether it's generating content quickly for social media or electronic distribution of newsletters, uh, especially with uh, COVID lockdown, where we're doing a lot more electronic communication. So being able to communicate uh, online and then transitioning quickly to be able to communicate face to face, this has been even more critical to have, to have capacity to run events and run this communication efficiently. Um, Joe, it seems mobile rules the world at the moment, doesn't it? And every business has got to, got to come to grips with it. Join us after the break as Joe delves into some of the challenges faced by We Ride Australia and offers Peter some suggestions on how to tackle them. Earlier in the show, we met Peter Burke at We Ride Australia, a small charity organisation with national reach. We heard about the problems he faces around the need for tech mobility and having hardware 
capable to quickly and easily deliver video content for their social media channels. Back with me now is Joe Burston, Dell Technologies Ambassador, to offer Peter some suggestions to address the technology challenges we ride is facing. Joe? Now, Peter, I understand that having great flexibility with your technology is really important. Can you run me through the mobility of your current system? We currently operate a number of two-in-one laptops. So at home, uh, in docking stations, they, they form our uh, a workstation. But then when we're out and about talking to stakeholders, the capacity to work, use them as a, a notebook and then have them as a laptop, whether we're, as I say, presenting at conferences or just generating that content for social media while we're out and about, that's, uh, that's definitely the, our challenges and our, uh, the solutions we're looking for. Well, I would love you to try Dell's Latitude 2-in-1 convertible laptops. They're great for on-the-go users who want a lightweight machine with optimum performance. Sounds great, Joe. And what are the next steps for us to implement your suggestions? It's really simple. Generally, we schedule a Zoom meeting with you to build a solution. The products would be sent to WeRide. And once set up, you can call Dell Technologies for one-on-one -on -one support or advice. Uh, Peter, ongoing support is an issue I hear from a lot of small business owners when it comes to technology, particularly implementing new tech. Is that a priority for you? Absolutely. For us as a small organisation, if the IT fails, our organisation comes to a grinding halt. So it is crucial to know that any new product that we use, that we bring into the organisation is supported and will be going in the long term. And Peter, it should be so critical for you. But the really good news is that Dell Technologies offer Pro Support Plus, which helps you stay a step ahead and almost eliminate unplanned downtime due to hardware issues and is suited for a business like we Ride that's always on the go. Thanks, Joe, and thanks, Peter. Certainly exciting times ahead for you and we Ride Australia, and I hope these solutions from Joe and Dell will help you get the message out there about the benefits of bike riding. Well, now to one of my favourite serial entrepreneurs, Irene Falcone. Irene started her skincare and beauty products empire, Nourished Life, with a hundred bucks from her garage and grew it to a $20 million a year business. Now she's bringing the lessons she learned from that startup to her new venture, Sands Drinks. She shares those lessons with us. My name is Irene Falcone and I am the founder and CEO of Sands Drinks. We offer non-alcoholic beer, wine, spirits and cocktails. Anything you can imagine that you love to drink but without the alcohol. My customer are those people who actually drink alcohol and they're just trying to drink less or less often. The biggest lesson I've learned in business is to always listen to your gut. It's your business. You know what's best, not other people. I wanted to open up a retail store so many times, but so many people told me not to. Don't go bricks and mortar. It's too risky. You've got big rents. Don't do it. You know, that was my biggest regret. So in this business, one of the first things I did was open up my own retail store, and I've never been happy. It was the best decision I've ever done. A great example of always listening to your gut and nobody else. Welcome back. You're watching Koshy's Business Builders. Now, there's no doubt the restrictions and lockdowns of the past 18 months have seen Aussie businesses cop a battering. We've also seen the impact on our manufacturing industry as imports ground to a halt, slowing production. One industry that has been particularly hard hit is the fashion sector. But there is a silver lining. Passionate Aussie entrepreneurs have jumped in to fill the gap delivering quality Australian-made goods that consumers love. Meet Kate Dillon, the founder and creative director of She Lion Handbags. Demand for Kate's bags took a dive when more people started working from home, but that didn't stop her. Kate reached out to other Aussie businesses to find a way to work together to rebuild our fashion manufacturing industry, creating more local jobs 
and ethically producing high quality goods in the process. Hi, my name's Kate Dillon and I'm the founder and creative director of She Lion Bags. SheLine has been around for almost six years and the business was going really well in 2019. To be honest, we were really gearing up for a growth year in 2020. And COVID started in March and it turns out that you don't need a really beautiful functional bag to carry your work gear from the kitchen to the home office. So I really had to think about the need my business was serving because COVID completely changed that. The shutdowns were affecting obviously so many people but small businesses um, so much. I really wanted to do something I didn't know what exactly, and being a small business myself with little means, thought about, you know, is there something that I could do that could contribute or at least start some sort of chain reaction of events? I am an avid fan of slogan sweatshirts. Very naively thinking, oh, you know, I'm just wanting to make a really simple sweatshirt, but I want it to be all Australian made. I want it to say, actually, I can, and I want it to say, support local. And the idea is that we collect as many small businesses as we can in this supply chain to demonstrate that it's possible. And I want to prove that I can do absolutely every element here. Each individual business owner, once they understood what the concept was, was amazing and absolutely got behind me and helped skill me up, essentially. There was a very high level of camaraderie between the people involved in the Actually I Can and Support Local Supply Chain. Every single element that you can think of was done by a Melbourne business or a Sydney business. We have the most amazingly skilled artisans and makers here in Australia and we should be bringing the business back here. There is this opportunity to bring so many more jobs back into Australia. We need like a new generation of people to be coming in and wanting to learn these skills if we're going to keep that here. And for that to happen, there needs to be people purchasing here in Australia. And that does cost more, but you are supporting so many people and so many jobs. So the question needs to be not why is it so expensive, it needs to be why is something so cheap? Because how is someone being paid if something was really that cheap? Small business is 97% of all business in Australia. And that's essentially Australia's largest employer. So when you're supporting small business, you're feeding our economy and you are making a difference. If everybody does one small thing each day to support another small business, I think that would absolutely be the way to turn us around from surviving to thriving. If you want to do your bit to help rebuild our fashion manufacturing industry too, buy a support local sweatshirt at shelion.com.au. 100% Australian designed and made. Well, hands up if you spend so much time working in your business that you forget to work on your business. You're not alone. <laughs> Every small business owner knows the problem of wearing just too many hats. So finding the time to focus on important strategies like marketing your brand can be difficult. Public relations expert Samantha Dieback is the founder and managing director of the PR Hub and host of the podcast, Influence Unlocked. Today, Sam shares with us some fast and easy tips on how you can build your personal brand as a small business owner. I'm Samantha Dieback, and I'm the founder and managing director of the PR Hub. We work with entrepreneurs, business leaders, and high growth disruptive companies to help them tell their stories so they can get on with doing what they do best. Building a profile or a personal brand might seem a little scary, but it doesn't have to be. And here are my top tips for getting started. Number one, understand what makes you unique and how it relates to your business. Your personal brand is your secret source, so take the time to understand what you're passionate about and what you want to be known for and how you can mix that into your business communications. Number two, feel the fear and do it anyway. Too many people get held back by worrying about what others think or say but we live in a world full of innovation and disruption and your brand needs you to be a confident spokesperson so it doesn't get lost. And last tip, content, content, content. As Bill Gates famously once said, content is king and you have so many options these days. Advice articles, photos, imagery, videos, stories. And remember, consistency and commitment is key.
Now, almost two thirds of small businesses have increased their use of digital tools as a result of COVID-19. And according to research from Google, it's paying off. 85% of small business owners who use digital tools say it positively affected their business, helping them to streamline processes, target communications and focus on sales opportunities. But while a large number of business owners have embraced digital, the survey found there is still a lack of awareness on what tools will bring the most benefit. Here to shed some light is Duncan McGrath, Head of SMB Marketing at Google Australia. So Duncan, what are some of the benefits we're seeing for businesses using digital tools? I think it kind of breaks down into two kind of key facets. So the first key benefit is by getting more customers and growing revenue and that's from using more targeted forms of online advertising. And the second key benefit has really been from streamlining those business operations. So the great news here is it's not only making you grow your business and get new customers, but you're being more efficient and profitable as a result. Okay, so what are some of the main processes that businesses automate with digital tools? It can start from your, your online marketing and all the way through your, your communications with customers through your website, go on to the days where you've got to take every single phone call in order to take a sale in business. Of course, you, your website alone is going to be taking transactions while you sleep. So it really can be from online sales right up to how you communicate. And what are some of the challenges to small businesses in using the tools? So I think just an awareness gap is one of our first challenges we see where you, know, you might be doing some things, you might be using video conferencing, you might have a basic website, but you're just not fully familiar of all the other sorts of things of more advanced forms of online marketing perhaps that can be really beneficial to your business. I think the other challenge is just there's this gap emerging in digital skills that we're seeing in Australia. Even once you become aware of those tools, do you feel like as a business owner, you have the skills to implement in your business or do the staff that you're employing have those skills too? Okay, but if small business owners are struggling wrapping their head around digital solutions, where can they go for help? Koshi, look, the great news is it's never been easier to, to get the, the skills you need to grow your business online. If you had to grow with Google, there's a platform we've built there that we've worked with all the different platforms and digital tools providers to give you a one-stop shop. And it's got bite-sized little training videos that are gonna walk you through from the most basic to the more advanced sort of practices here to give you just what you need to go and move yourself along that journey of digitizing your business. So it's a great place to start. Duncan, thanks so much. Such practical and useful advice. Really appreciate it. Pleasure, Koshi. See you soon. And finally, this week for us, Koshi, Max Callos from The Last Coach asks a curly question on the subject of digital marketing. Hello, I'm Max from Melbourne. My company is called The Last Coach. I provide career coaching, working together with clients to improve the direction, performance and well-being of their working lives. More people than ever want to change what they do and how they do it. However, there are some distinct client groups. Execs who want to rise faster or find a new direction entirely. Startup founders in need of some objective support. School leavers looking to set off on the right foot. Return to work parents wanting a better work-life balance. And retiring athletes looking to establish a working life after sport. My question for you, David, is how can I decide whether to do digital marketing? And if so, how do I know which of the many options is the best for my business at The Last Coach? Thank you. To help me answer this question, I'm joined by digital marketing guru, Nick Brogdon, the founder of Earned Media. Nick, digital marketing is so important for every small business these days. A lot of owners don't have much expertise in it. How do you know if you're going to get bang for your buck if you outsource? Well, if you're outsourcing, the best way to know is to really make sure that the people you're working with really understand who your buyers are. Because if they don't know the exact buyer that they're targeting, then they can, they can spend a lot of your money on you know, acquiring people leads that aren't really gonna close. So a good idea is to initially, before you uh, go and hire somebody, is to make sure that you've really flushed out your buyer personas so as you can let people know who they're specifically to target. Okay, and then go to experts who specialise in those sorts of customers? Absolutely, and you, you want to speak to people and, and sort of get their idea of what they think is the best way to go after those customers right. and what's the best aspects of your product to do so. And that way they can then advise you on what channels you should use and you can sort of get a better understanding of, of if that's the right person to work with you. What about if you're a business owner that decides to do it yourself? There's a lot of information that's available on the web, so you can research what to do, uh, but you really want to work out 
what channel you're going to be focused on. So you may decide to use, say, Google Ads again, just using that example. It's always a good place to start. You want to really understand what's your commercial keywords. So what are the terms that if someone's searching that term, they actually want to buy something? A lot of people trip up because they search for terms that are more research-based, spend all their money on research terms and not on the pointy end of the deal. OK, that's interesting. So you really got to think that through. That's right. It's extremely important. Without targeting commercial keywords, uh, you, you're very unlikely to have success. You're better off to pay more for the traffic and convert than pay less and not convert. OK. Nick, some great advice there. Thank you for that. Good to see you. No problem. Well, that's all we have time for today, but head over to koshisbusinessbuilders.com.au and you'll discover more ways to build your business ideas and make it more profitable. You can also catch up on past episodes of the show. So I look forward to seeing you at the same time next week for another Koshi's Business Builders. Mm -hmm.